Hello and welcome back. Now this week we're going to be looking at what I think is possibly the most dangerous piece of misinformation that's out there on the internet at the minute. And I'm going to specifically be addressing the claims of a certain Dr. Andrew Kaufman. But what put me on the path to make this video? Well, it all started last week when I was engaging in the, the chat of a live stream that was so scientifically illiterate, at first I thought it was a comedy show. But somewhere in there was a little ray of hope. A degree in biology is nothing compared to what you really need to do to be a biologist which is gonna take basically spending the rest of your life figuring out what the f how absurdly complex it all is right because what you just learn as a degree is just this much and there is this much <laughs> Yeah, for a second, and just for a second, while I was watching that live stream, it was truly heartwarming to see somebody come to the realization that true mastery over a specific area can take years and years and years and years of hard work. It was almost like a, an anti-Dunning-Kruger warning. It was lovely to see, until he ruined it by saying this. There's a good argument from a very baseline medical bottoms up perspective to argue that viruses don't exist. Now I have no idea how he went so quickly from realizing that biology is a big subject that takes years and years to master to suddenly pulling comments like that out his backside. Um, it's quite spectacular, but he was convinced. Viruses could definitely be considered to be all fake as a concept in the first instance. Yeah, never before have I seen on one of these streams somebody warning against the effects of Dunning-Kruger before immediately following it up by showing how much they suffer from it. Uh, and if you don't know what Dunning-Kruger is, essentially it means that those people who have least experience in a subject tend to overestimate their competence in it. Like this. So the claim has been made, viruses don't exist, and that is quite a claim to make, but I'm sure he can at least articulate his reasons why. Maybe you should look into the alternative. I think it's called now field theory. Or was it opposing virus theory? That they are actually an integral part of the uh, cellular meta metabolism systems. Well, I don't know about you, but he's got me hooked. He clearly knows what he's talking about. Uh, and what was it he said? Field theory? Uh, an alternative to viruses existing? Anyway, I did look into field theory and it was very interesting, just like this paper here which investigates exactly how the parts of a virus are put together inside the cell after that cell has been infected by a virus and turned into a, a virus producing machine. Yeah, very interesting. And it seems that Arwen wasn't the only one dropping knowledge bombs on me in that hangout. In fact, I was insulted and uneducated in equal amounts by a whole range of uniquely brilliant minds, as you're about to see. Now, I have changed the username of the people involved in this conversation to something a little bit more appropriate. But if you want to check the link in the description, I have linked it to the original hangout so you know I'm not making these up. Number one, I learned that malaria isn't real, it's just a scam. Number two, I learned that the idea that germs can make you ill, otherwise known as germ theory, has always been in doubt. Number three, did you know that all viral outbreaks that have happened in history have all been lined up with electromagnetics? Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. I learned that understanding infection rates is pretty pointless, because at the end of the day, if viruses were real and one of them got airborne, then everybody in the world would get it. And I learned that it was totally useless turning to peer-reviewed proper science to try and explain what's going on. Because after all, all peer-reviewed science papers are totally under the control of our oppressive regime. So there I was, watching the video, engaging the chat, being polite, which comes back to bite me on the bum later on, as you'll see at the end of this video. Um, but I couldn't shake the feeling that, you know, virology is an established science. We know what viruses are. We know they infect cells and we know how they do it. So I couldn't help but point that out. But of course, in an environment like this, anything you say that has even a seasoning of common sense goes down about as well as a turd sandwich. Yes, I was reliably informed that we can't trust the entire field of virology because it's an ass backwards model. And apparently viruses are what we call cleanup tools. They do not make you sick. You heard it here first. So I felt that I needed to point out the absurdity of the claims these people were making, and I thought I could do it via this epic comment. 
And the reason I made this comment wasn't to ridicule, it was to inspire. It was to make them sit there and really look and reflect on the work that they had done in the field of virology and realise that they probably had never done any work in the field of virology and maybe, just maybe, they might realise that it takes more than watching a handful of YouTube videos to actually understand what virology is about. And I sat there desperately waiting for a reply because I knew, I knew that I could reach out to one of these people and make them go and read a scientific paper. So yes, I did ask them, how many YouTube videos did it take for you to believe that viruses are not harmful? Yeah, truly inspired comment, I thought at the time, but it does appear that the epicness of that comment was, uh, was overlooked as this is the reply I got. Uh, probably about six or seven, really. Yeah, yeah, it was enough for me. So that was it, the stage was set. I had to get one of these cutting edge internet scientists to reveal their special source to me, so to speak. Uh, meaning, who was it and what was it they were saying that led them to believe such ridiculous things as viruses don't exist or viruses can't cause disease? Because as soon as I found out who it was, I was gonna be on a mission to prove them wrong. So after asking for what seemed like a dozen times for the name of just one specific doctor or source that says viruses aren't infectious, I got this as the answer. Kaufman. Now I'd never heard of Kaufman which allowed our friend to display her belief that somehow it's the science deniers who are ahead of the curve and more educated than the rest of us. But eventually after a bit of sarcasm and a bit of name calling I was reliably informed that his name was Dr. Andrew Kaufman. But of course when I actually pressed these people to find out what Dr. Kaufman's stance was I got the old familiar message that I needed to go and do my own research and that is not in any way because these people haven't got a clue what they're talking about honestly. So all that brought me to this video here, because knowing that there's a, a doctor out there that's actually contributing to that level of ignorance on the internet, I had to do a little bit of research on him. And the first thing I found out about him is that he's not very well researched. For example, we all know that COVID-19 has number 19 in the name because it emerged in 2019. I'm sure he couldn't possibly have overlooked that. This is COVID-19. Yeah, and lots of others, isn't there? Right, so there's at least 18 that came before it. Um, Although 19 may have a, a special uh, significance. Well, maybe he can. Uh, now, the second thing I found out about Dr. Kaufman is that he's still not very well researched, as in he's not a virologist. He's not taken part in any active research in this topic whatsoever. All he's actually done is take the same written evidence that's available to all of us, but just draw a laughably wrong conclusion from it. You know, what, what I've really done is um, it's not that um, uh, surprising or sophisticated. I've just taken the evidence that uh, has been put forward by the scientific and public health establishment and just looked at that from a scientific perspective. And the third thing I found out about Dr. Kaufman is he really, really, really needs to update his definition of the term special treat. I'm Dr. Andrew Kaufman and I have a special treat for you today. I have a new PowerPoint slide presentation. Yeah, I bet Friday nights are absolutely electric in the Kaufman household. Um, now, what is his new presentation about and how is it going to show us that viruses do not cause disease. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Cox. Sorry? C can we just play that again? Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Cox. Just one more time. Just let it run a little bit longer this time, yeah? Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Cox postulates. Ah, of course, yes. Cox postulates, never in any doubt. Um, so what are Cox postulates? Well, they've been a very important part of biology and they were originally uh, published by Robert Koch in 1890. And they were there to show that we'd found the cause of the diseases cholera and tuberculosis. And since then, they've been generalized. They're a set of criteria. And if we can match these criteria for a particular disease, we can show that a particular bacteria is the cause of that disease. Notice I said bacteria and not virus. That'll be important later on. But for now, here's what the criteria are. Well, basically they're boiled down to this. Firstly, we should be able to find the bacteria in every single organism that has a disease. We should be able to extract it and grow it in a culture. Once we've grown it in a culture, we should be able to introduce it into a new host. That new host will then get the disease and we should be able to re-isolate the same bacteria from that new host. Right, so why is this important? Well, it's important because the whole point of Kaufman's video is to try and debunk this paper here. Now, this paper claims that it successfully applied these postulates to the SARS virus. Now, if that's true, that means viruses do indeed cause disease and Kaufman is wrong. So how exactly does Kaufman try and worm his way out of this and discredit the work that's been done? So I came across this article that some of my viewers sent me 
and it claims that Cox postulates have been fulfilled for the SARS virus. So I want to point out that right here, just between the title and what they say in the body of this article, already they're misleading you. Because in the second paragraph, they wrote, according to Cox postulates as modified by Rivers for viral disease. So it's not Cox postulates, it's Rivers criteria, which is different. And they should have put that in the title, but they're misleading you to make you think that Cox postulates have been fulfilled. So one of the big premises of Kaufman's argument is that we're not actually using Cox postulates. We're using something called Rivers criteria to show that the virus is a cause of the disease. And he seems to want to make out that this is some sort of dishonest action and we're having the wool pulled over our eyes. So why would we not use Cox postulates? Well, firstly, let's remember that Robert Koch didn't publish his postulates until 1890. And secondly, let's remember that his second postulate says a microorganism must be isolated and grown in a pure culture. But this was long before anybody knew what a virus was, and viruses can't be grown on a growth medium like bacteria can. We all know that viruses need a host cell to help them replicate. So at the very least, we need to change the wording of postulate number two when it comes to viruses and remove the term pure culture. Anyway, back to viruses, removing them from the host they are in and placing them in other cells purely to cultivate them puts different selective pressures on the population and can alter the virulence of that virus. Now this process is well understood and there are several papers just like this one which look at how the virulence of individual viruses are affected by this cultivating process. So it should be no surprise to anybody, least of all Dr Kaufman, that Cox postulates aren't being followed word for word when it comes to seeing if a disease is caused by a given virus. In fact, even a quick look on Wikipedia says that Cox postulates without modification are not suitable for viral diseases. But luckily there are more suitable criteria such as the Bradford Hill criteria which you can see on the screen right now or the Rivers criteria which has just been mentioned. Now given that what I've said is pretty common knowledge, all I can think of when I hear him say this. It's not Cox postulates, it's Rivers criteria which is different and they should have put that in the title but they're misleading you to make you think that Cox postulates have been fulfilled. Yeah, all I can think of when I hear him say that is why are you surprised? Why do you think that's misleading? Why is it a surprise to you that Cox postulates, which were derived before we even knew viruses existed, are not used for a viral disease? It just all makes me think that you don't really know what you are talking about. And to highlight the fact that he's making a big song and dance about pretty much absolutely nothing, we can compare the two criteria here. And I'll point you to number two, where we talk about the cultivation of a virus in a host cell for Rivers criteria, and point number six, which now talks about the detection of a specific immune response to the virus. Because of course, in 1890, not only did we not know what a virus was, but we didn't know what antibodies were. So there we go, the scene is now set for Kaufman to try and deny the fact that we know viruses cause disease by discrediting Rivers criteria, which he does with the type of dishonesty and arrogance that I rarely have seen in all the videos I've made. Keep an eye on this one. So notice what is not in Rivers criteria. There is nothing about genetic material, DNA or RNA. Now as a standalone statement, that is correct. But why do you think that is? Well, it might be because Rivers criteria was established in 1937, which was 16 years before the structure of DNA was discovered and genetic testing could begin. Right, now just bear that in mind for a few moments as we actually have a look at what the authors of that paper actually did to isolate the virus that was responsible for SARS disease. Well, they took a couple of macaque monkeys and they injected it with the SARS virus. Unsurprisingly, a couple of days later, they started showing symptoms. They then killed the monkeys. Yeah, sorry bud. But not before taking samples of nasal excretions and feces and then when after the monkeys were dead, they took samples of lung fluid. They then applied a technique called polymerase chain reaction to these samples. Now PCR is a way of taking small amounts of DNA and multiplying them very, very quickly. Once they had enough DNA to work with, they then analyzed it and surprise, surprise, they found exact matches for the SARS virus. So that should be it, surely game over. Let's do a quick recap. Now those of you that have been paying close attention might realize that we actually started off at Rivers criteria point number four here, producing the same disease in a different host. But it was only possible to introduce that virus into a different host because criteria number one, two and three had already been successfully carried out in these papers here, which of course have all been referenced in that study. So case closed, we've isolated the virus, we've given it to a new host, it's caused the disease, and then we've isolated the virus again from that new diseased host. So ladies and gentlemen, get prepared for what must be the most dishonest debunk I have ever seen, and it comes from our friend, Dr. Andrew Kaufman. Ladies and gentlemen, the most dishonest debunk of all time by anyone ever. 
So go on then, I hear you ask, how did Kaufman actually try and worm his way out of this one? Well, remember the study that we actually looked at just a few moments ago, where the scientists use a technique called PCR or polymerase chain reaction to amplify the DNA coming from the samples from the macaque monkeys. They then analyzed that DNA and found it was a perfect match for the virus that they had injected into the monkey, therefore showing that they had isolated the virus from the infected monkey. Done. Do you remember that? We'll check this out. Uh, just take the whole thing. They don't filter it or purify it in any way, but they add some enzymes that dissolve the membrane so it releases all the genetic material that may be inside of cells or particles into the free solution. And then they do is uh, put in some PCR probes, which will amplify various pieces of genetic material, and they can then sequence that genetic material and characterize it in many ways. But this has nothing to do with River's criteria. Uh, as I said before, there was nothing mentioned about genetic material. Now, if you didn't quite catch, though, what Kaufman was effectively and spectacularly saying, his whole point here is because we are using genetic analysis techniques developed post-1937, because technology has moved on since 1937, because we've got better at identifying things since 1937, and we're using techniques that couldn't be written into Rivers criteria because they hadn't yet been invented, this whole study is invalidated. That is the point he's making. It is unbelievable arrogance and dishonesty that I, I rarely see. And I've seen a lot of it making the videos I do. So I wonder, does Kaufman think that the only evidence he will accept is an electron microscope image of a virus isolated from one of the macaque monkeys? But don't you worry, Mr. Kaufman, because in addition to the compelling genetic evidence that we have, this picture here shows virus particles that have been isolated from the nasal swabs of those infected macaque monkeys, and they display perfectly typical coronavirus morphology. Now, it appears that Kaufman has a pre-ready response to that point also. Apparently, when we're looking at viruses under an electron microscope, we're not looking at viruses, we're looking at something else. But I'll get back to that point in a minute, after a quick message to these guys. Oh my god, Conspiracy Cats doesn't even know who Kaufman is. What an absolute frigging potato. I had no idea he was so irresponsible not doing his research like that. Makes me really sad that we're the ones that are really far ahead of everybody else and these people are still so far behind. Oh, anyway, I'm off now for my advanced shoelace tying class. Uh, I did really well last week. I managed to tie the left one, so I'm going to try and do both this week. But something's about the right one. It just makes it seem a little bit harder. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think for those guys, it really is time for a quick verbal slap back into the real world. So when I tell you things like viruses infect cells, rather than just reply with the word how in capital letters and then follow that up with comments that display your overconfidence in your own lack of ability, why don't you take your own advice and do a bit of research? Maybe read a scientific paper like this one or the many papers like it that will tell you exactly what you need to know. Now I know it's difficult and it's got a lot of big words in it and I know it's easier just to watch six or seven YouTube videos but when you take that approach you end up believing in all sorts of unvalidated nonsense that you yourself lack the ability to explain. But it's okay because when people point out to you that you don't understand it and that you can't explain it, you can just hide behind the claim that you aren't here to teach us anything. Fine, but if that's true, stop preaching nonsense like this. And what are these guys doing here? Well, they're protesting against genetic modification by ripping up this farmer's crop. But it's okay, we can tell them to stop, because if viruses don't exist, then we couldn't possibly be using these viruses here in genetic modification as vectors to introduce the required gene. In fact, people like the authors of this paper here need telling that we do not in fact use viruses as vectors to introduce genes to help people with a wide range of health issues. No, what in fact we need to do is educate these people and tell them that there's no way a virus can carry out all the stuff we say because they are dead. And it doesn't matter that I use the word dead there instead of non-living, and it doesn't matter that they're only non-living because they need a whole cell to replicate. When did facts ever get you anywhere? And a dead thing can't do anything, so what you need to do is go and watch six or seven YouTube videos and overturn the entirety of microbiology and virology and medicine, just like I did here when I pulled the words toxin and electromagnetics right out my arsehole. And while I'm at it, what's with this toxin crap anyway? What are you actually suggesting? Are you suggesting that in Wuhan somebody had a particularly bad diet? that cause them to be ill and then just out of sympathy millions of people across the globe also start sticking toxins in their own body to mimic what would look like a virus outbreak. 
Now, I could go on, but until you're willing to take a look, and I mean a real look at the body of evidence that is out there that shows us that we do understand what viruses are, and we do know for a fact that they infect cells and cause disease, until you're willing to take a real look at that evidence, rather than just sit down munching a bag of crisps watching six or seven YouTube videos, then you're going nowhere. But the irony is, while you're going nowhere, you're going there claiming that you are the ones doing proper research. Anyway, back to Kaufman. Now, if you remember a couple of minutes ago, we left him with this picture here of the virus isolated from the macaque monkey. So how does he try and explain this one away? Well, by simply sticking his fingers in his ears and saying this. But there is no way to tell if the particles that they have identified after this procedure are from this tissue culture with antibiotics or if they're from this lung fluid. So Kaufman's argument here is that these viruses we're looking at aren't viruses at all. In fact, they're just something else that come from the cells we were using to grow the virus, specifically something called exosomes, which are virus sized like particles, which are used for communication between cells. So his whole argument essentially boils down to the fact that we don't know what viruses look like and we just get a bit confused. Well, the morphology of viruses is fascinating. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Here's the herpes virus, here's the Ebola virus, here's the common cold, and here's the coronavirus. And just for completion, here's a bunch of exosomes, and from the same paper I got those photographs from, here's a sentence which describes just how distinctive the properties of exosome membranes are. So it appears that in his own little world, Kaufman wants to believe that all viruses are exosomes, and that's it. And maybe he believes that because he's seen papers like this before that he's then not bothered to read. Studies such as this one show how some viruses have evolved the ability to use exosomes to carry their own genetic material around the body, helping spread the speed of infection. So, to cut a long story short, after I was told by internet scientists on a scientifically illiterate YouTube stream that I needed to go out and do some research and I needed to go out and find out what Kaufman was saying, I did. And here is his argument summarised in full by the cat. Okay, my name's Kaufman, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove that viruses never cause disease. I've got a really good, I know it sounds stupid, I've got a good way of doing it. We're going to take Cox postulates, which were invented even before the virus was invented, I think that's right. Um, and what that means is we can never use Cox postulates to prove that a virus caused anything because they're just not suitable for viral diseases. So, got you on that one. Now, some clever people, they try and update that to include viruses and make stuff like Rivers criteria, but that's okay because I got you there as well. Rivers criteria was invented a long time ago in 1937. So if anybody tries to use genetic techniques to back up what they find and apply it to Rivers criteria, I'm just going to say, no, genetics wasn't a thing in 1937, so screw you, you're wrong. You can't do that. Now, what some other scientists think they've done is actually look at a virus under a microscope after taking it from a, a sick patient monkey. Um, now, I'm going to say, look, that can't be because other things in the universe exist apart from viruses and you're probably looking at one of those other things. Yeah, now if I follow all those three steps and I can prove viruses don't cause disease, but what I will never try and do is provide any actual evidence or scientific research uh, to show that I'm right because, you know, I'm not. So there we go, what a load of tosh. Now, you might remember earlier on in this video, I showed you four references which showed that Rivers Criteria 1 to 3 had been met preceding the SARS investigation that we've looked at today. Now, Kaufman does go on to try and discredit those, but he does it spectacularly badly, as we might expect, and I don't want to make this video go any longer than it has, but if there is demand, I will go back and I will show his mistakes on those points as well. But for now, I did mention at the beginning of the video that uh, being polite on Arwin's stream will come back to bite me in the bum. And it appears that it does. It appears that sitting there and disagreeing politely will get you banned and insulted from Arwin's channel. Enjoy, and I'll see you later. <sighs> Sorry for the swearing, it's just the conspiracy. I, I should ban him. This guy is, a f is just disgusting. The stupid calm demeanor is absolute doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on stupidity and just being so polite, so polite, you're so polite, yet you're beep, you just lie to yourself for everybody to see, yeah, I'm sick of it, beep, beep, beep. off and you're polite bullshit, beep, beep, beep. off conspiracy catch, you stupid, beep, 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 you stupid retard,